بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ جرنی آف اباؤٹ تھری سیشنز اینڈ دیز تھری سیشنز آر گوئنگ ٹو بی کورنگ اے ویری انٹرسٹنگ کمپیریزن آف کارپوریٹ گورننس کوڈز آف کنٹریز اینڈ دس از گوئنگ ٹو بی پارٹ ون وی گوئنگ ٹو بیسکلی سی دا ڈفرینس اور دا سملیرٹی بٹوین دی کارپوریٹ گورننس کوڈز آف فور ڈفرینٹ کنٹریز اینڈ وی گوئنگ ٹو سی ہاؤ دے کمپیئر ود پاکستان اینڈ واٹ آر دا گیپس and what are the additional uh, clauses or codes which are existent over there. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, when we are going to be comparing, then this comparison is going to be between Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. Basically, all are SARC countries. All have a very similar texture. All have been uh, a part of the British Empire and therefore, they all come from the common law system, uh, which basically is based upon the British law system or the British legal structure. And there are a lot of similarities. However, despite those similarities, uh, when we are talking about the corporate governance guidelines or the corporate governance codes, then there is a difference uh, between uh, these uh, different countries. So first of all, let us look at the composition of the board. Now, when we look at Bangladesh, then they basically are representing various uh, categories of shareholders and independent directors. While in India, we see that the optimum combination of executive and non-executive directors with at least one woman director. And then in Sri Lanka, the balance of executive and non-executive directors, including independent non-executive directors. And Pakistan, effective representation of independent non-executive directors, including those representing minority interests. So if we look at the composition of the board, even though there is a lot of similarity, but despite that, there is a little bit of difference and differentiation uh, between uh, the four. If we look at the board size, then Bangladesh specifies a minimum of five and a maximum of 20. While India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan, it's not specifically covered. Uh, we look at the maximum number of committees in which a member can be a part. Uh, then for Bangladesh, it is not specifically mentioned. It's not specifically mentioned in Pakistan and also not in Sri Lanka. However, in India, not more than 10 committees across all companies in which he or she is a director. So over there, we see that there is a limitation of 10 committees. We look at the role of the board, then in all four countries, it is covered and it is uh, properly enumerated within the code of governance. So uh, we see that there is a great similarity between Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan in the role of the board. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, moving a little bit ahead, again talking about the comparison of the board of directors, when we are talking about the maximum number of committees in which a member can act as a chairman uh, or chairperson, uh, in Bangladesh it is not specifically covered, nor is it in Sri Lanka and nor is it in Pakistan. However, in India, not more than five committees across all companies in which he or she is a director. So again, in, in the Indian uh, code of conduct, it is specifically specified and there is an upper limit of five committees of which they can be the chairperson or chairman. Uh, when we're talking about number of meetings in a year and the time interval between the different meetings, then in Bangladesh, it is not specifically covered and therefore it can be as and when required. However, when we are talking about India, at least four times a year with a maximum time gap of 120 days between any two meetings, we see that in Sri Lanka, at least once in every quarter of a financial year, quite similar to uh, the Indians, but again, they have been able to specify a maximum gap. And then Pakistan, very similar to Sri Lanka, is at least once in every quarter of a financial year. So there's a lot of similarity, but there are finer points or finer guidelines in which the four countries can differ. Uh, we talk about the evaluation of the BOD as a whole, then uh, it is not covered in the Bangladesh Code of Governance. However, it is adequately covered in India, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. And the evaluation of the CEO, again, not specifically covered in Bangladesh, but in India, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan, it has been adequately covered. So there we see that, again, a lot of similarity, but there can be a little bit of deviation uh, based upon the country in which we are going to be. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we talk about the training of the board of directors. Then it is covered in India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan, but not specifically in Bangladesh. We talk about the committees of the BOD. Then in Bangladesh, 
the compulsory committee is the audit committee. Uh, in India, it is the audit, uh, remuneration and nomination committee. So they have uh, three different committees. Uh, in uh, Sri Lanka also, we see that there is the audit, remuneration and nomination committees. And in Pakistan, we have the audit, human resource, uh, remuneration uh, committee. So uh, again, uh, different type of committees, but there is one similarity across all four countries and that is the audit committee and we talked about the audit committee previously, it is a very, very important committee, especially to ensure uh, that the guidelines of corporate governance are properly uh, materialized and properly implemented within the organization across the different levels and the board of directors have an oversight on it. Uh, when we talk about the code of conduct, then the code of conduct is covered in Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. And again, disclosure of remunerations is covered by all uh, four countries. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, moving forward with the comparison in the board of directors, uh, we're going to talk about a very important aspect and that is the number of independent directors. At least one-tenth of the total number if the directors of the directors or minimum one in Bangladesh and in India, at least one-third of the board if there is an executive chairman. And when we are talking about uh, Sri Lanka, at least two non-executive directors or one-third of the total number of directors, whichever is higher. If chairman and CEO is the same person, uh, comprise a majority of the board. So again, we see that in Sri Lanka, it is more elaborate, while in Pakistan, it is at least one and preferably one third of the total members. So again, what we see is, is that there is a lot of difference between the four countries and there is a different composition in the number of independent directors. Uh, we talk about uh, the uh, limit on the number of independent uh, directorships. Then when we're talking about Bangladesh, not more than three listed companies. When we're talking about India, not more than seven, but if whole time director in any listed company as an independent director in not more than three listed companies. So again, we are talking about three listed companies over here, while in Sri Lanka and Pakistan, it is not specifically covered. So again, a very, very important aspect of the number of independent directorships and also the total number of independent directors uh, allowed in the board of directors. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, moving forward, Shareholding of uh, independent directors, uh, not more than 1% uh, in Bangladesh, not more than 2% uh, in India, not more than 5% in Sri Lanka, and not more than 10% in Pakistan. So we see this uh, incremental uh, difference between the four countries, with Bangladesh uh, having the minimum and Pakistan having the maximum 1% to 10%. Uh, maximum tenure of independent directors, three years extended for one term only uh, in, in Bangladesh. Uh, in India, it is as per their law. Uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, it is nine years, while in Pakistan, three consecutive terms. So again, there is a lot of disparity uh, between uh, this uh, maximum tenure of independent uh, directors. Uh, talking about the appointment of independent directors, then it is done by the board of directors in Bangladesh. Uh, in India, it is as per law. Uh, in Sri Lanka, it is through the nomination committee. And in Pakistan, it is not specifically covered. Uh, performance evaluation. Uh, of the independent directors, uh, well, over there, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in Bangladesh, it's not specifically covered, uh, nor is it specifically covered in Pakistan, uh, but in India and in Sri Lanka, uh, it is covered. Uh, going on to uh, our final comparison uh, regarding the board of directors, the separate meetings of the independent directors. In Bangladesh, it is not specifically covered. In India, at least one meeting in a year. In Sri Lanka, also one in a year. And in Pakistan, it's not specifically covered. Restriction to be an independent director in Bangladesh, a sponsor, loan defaulter, stock exchange member, they cannot become members. While in India, pecuniary relationship with the company or subsidiary or supplier, that would be a conflict of interest. And in Sri Lanka, material relationship or close family member or significant shareholdings, again, they cannot become independent directors. And in Pakistan, uh, any connection with the family or any relationship uh, with the company, they cannot become independent director. So again, in the context of the constitution of the board and the composition of the board, uh, we see that there are a lot of similarities between Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. But in the micro, uh, in the in the micro issues and in the micro contextualization uh, of the code and guidelines, we see that there are some uh, differences uh, depending upon uh, what uh, what we are talking about and depending upon the context and composition we see that there are also differences between Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka 
in Pakistan. Thank you so much.